Connor and their 16-month-old child, Lonnie Jr. Their friend, Robin Scott Stapley, had vanished with them. And finally, Paul Cosner, whose car had originally led investigators on this trail of kidnapping and murder. The task force received one bit of good news. Hey, listen up, fellas. We finally caught a break on this one. We were able to ID all these women and they're all still alive. Finding the girls alive was a relief, but Lake's property still held many mysteries. Agents feared they would never know the complete story of the Calaveras County murders unless they found Charles Ng. After weeks of searching, they still had not located the fugitive. Then on July 6, 1985, a boy riding his bicycle in a Canadian park spotted the perfect place for a play fort. He was surprised to see a man living there. He went to the police and told them he had found a campsite and had seen a man who looked like Charles Ng. The boy recognized him from wanted posters. He led police to the makeshift shelter, only to find that Ng had fled. This campsite's clear. He's gone. Later that same day, Charles Ng would make the mistake investigators had been waiting for. Ironically, it was the same mistake that started the police investigation a month earlier. Call the police now. Check your mail. Okay. A security guard confronted a young Asian male as he slipped stolen merchandise into his knapsack in a Calgary department store. As the security guard struggled with the gunman, he was shot in the hand. Still, he managed to wrestle the weapon from the shooter and hold him until police arrived. Charles Ng was captured and booked on charges of attempted murder, robbery, and possession of a firearm. This is Channel 10 Eyewitness News. Night one. Good evening, Popping Night Watch. Charles Ng is in a Canadian jail tonight, and the worldwide manhunt has ended for the crime hey, Ron, come take a look at the news. More than a news of Ng's arrest in Canada reached the sheriff's office in Calaveras County. Run, Ng was captured by security guards in a Calgary department store, but not before he engaged them in a brief gun battle and wounded one of the guards. Ng was quickly subdued by store patrons and was taken into police custody. San Francisco Police Inspector Ed Erdelatz was eager to question the suspect. He flew to Calgary, where Ng was being held in a maximum security prison. And, and we spent uh, quite a few hours with Charles in the detention center in Calgary. And although he did talk with us, most of his responses were one and two word answers, a very little dialogue, and primarily uh, denial. We could have gone into a lot of things uh, had, he, uh, had he been willing to talk to us about those things, but that didn't occur. The murders, Ng claimed, were all the work of Leonard Lake. When pressed, Ng did admit to Erdelatz that he had helped Lake dispose of the bodies of Lonnie Bond and Scott Stapley the day after they were murdered. In Calaveras County, the district attorney's office indicted Ng on 12 counts of first-degree murder, making it possible for the prosecution to seek the death penalty. But Ng's flight to Canada had created a significant obstacle. District attorney Pete Smith explains. There was an extradition treaty between the United States and Canada at the time, and in that extradition treaty, there was a condition that nobody would be extradited from Canada back to the United States who faced the death penalty. There were some exceptions to the treaty, however. Do you think we can work around that? If the district attorney's office could prove to a Canadian court that Ng was guilty of multiple murders, Canada would be required to hand over the suspected killer. Before the extradition hearing could begin, Ng would have to stand trial in Canada on shoplifting and assault charges. 
In order to delay his extradition, Ng waived his right to a jury trial and asked for a speedier bench trial. He received a four and a half year sentence. Until he completed that sentence, the Calaveras County District Attorney could not initiate the complicated extradition process. Even if they could prove their case, they would have to wait over four years before they could begin. While the Calaveras County District Attorney's Office built their case against Charles Ng, the search for evidence continued at Leonard Lake's cabin. By this time, five bodies had been found and identified. Hundreds of personal effects had been recovered. More than 40 pounds of unidentifiable human remains had been unearthed. Investigators believe that as many as 25 missing persons had been linked to the cabin. As the evidence against Ng continued to grow, he used his time in a Canadian prison to try to fend off any attempts at extradition. He knew if he was successfully extradited back to the United States, he would have to face a murder trial and the possibility of the death penalty. He began to educate himself on the American legal system. For a boy with limited education raised in Hong Kong, he was remarkably adept at knowing the, the legal system here and how to deal with it. A guard reported to the prison warden, he overheard Ng say to a fellow inmate, if you want to delay the system, you just have to fire your lawyers. On October 17, 1988, the extradition hearings finally began. Ng lost the case and appealed all the way to the Canadian Supreme Court. His appeal was denied. Within the same day, he, Charles Ng was placed on an airplane in Canada and flown back to California. But the pursuit of justice was far from over. Charles Ng had used his time in Canada to arm himself with enough legal knowledge to wage an all-out war on the American judicial system. On September 26, 1991, suspected serial killer Charles Ng was finally returned to California. The Calaveras County District Attorney charged Ng with 12 counts of murder. Detective Sergeant Randy Grassmuck transported Ng daily from the California Department of Corrections to the Calaveras County Courthouse. We had high security. We had our SWAT team up on the roof for a while. Uh, we had heard that, that somebody wanted to kill Charles Ng. But let's face it, the last thing we wanted to do as Calaveras County Sheriff's Department was lose Charles Ng. Calaveras County was not prepared to handle a prisoner like Charles Ng. Their courthouse wasn't secure enough to hold a maximum security prisoner. The county had to build a special cage to house Ng during his legal proceedings. From the moment Ng arrived in the county, he was intent on wreaking havoc and creating delay. He began by trying to fire his attorneys and complaining about his treatment. He filed motions for better food, and a shorter commute from the prison. He demanded to have his cage dismantled. Although each motion was frivolous, it sapped the resources of the Calaveras County District Attorney's Office. I didn't realize how truly huge this case was. We're very small. I, we have five attorneys, uh, including myself. There's the assistant district attorney, and then I have three deputy district attorneys. We have two investigators, and we have three support staff, and that's it in our criminal division. Um, uh, it's like a very small law firm. The prosecution battled Charles Ng for a full year before his preliminary hearing even started. Your Honor, at this point in time, we would like to present photos, affidavits and videotapes into evidence against the defendant. 
The purpose of this proceeding was simply to determine whether the prosecution had sufficient evidence to try Ng.